Hello again, it's Josh Carr, and today we're going to do some brain surgery. Uh, this is a financial model that a colleague of mine sent me, and here's the problem that my colleague is having. In this deal, we are taking the cash flows in year 11. We are figuring out what we're going to sell the cash flows for. We're going to take the loan balance. We're going to get to our net sales proceeds again. Take the cash flow, cap it at some sort of yield, get a value, back out the debt, and then we're going to take that cash flow after debt service and we're going to put it into some sort of property level returns, both at the unlevered basis, on an unlevered basis and a levered basis, and then we're gonna take that and have that flow into some sort of equity structure. Here's the challenge that my colleague came to me with. He said, in this case, we're selling at the end of year 10, wouldn't it be nice if instead we were to sell it at say, I don't know, the end of year five? In other words, could we make this thing flexible? We can, you just gotta use some lookup functions. It's really not that big of a deal. So in this case, Step one, we've got here our cash flows from some sort of operating statement. I need to make this flexible. So I'm going to have some sort of control year. And so, for example, if it's 11, then we're going to go to the operating statement here. And we want it to pull, we'll say, this 8.7 million. If it's 7, you want it to pull this value. That's the basic premise. So what do we do? Well, I could say let's do a VLOOKUP that says look for, or sorry, an HLOOKUP. Mm. Uh, yeah, let's do a VLOOKUP where we look for that line item and I'm going to do it here on the operating statement. I'm going to do it right here. There's the operating statement. And I'm going to look for, if I want the 11th column, if I want to take 11 and count over 11, let's see how many columns we have. Well, it looks like column B is where that rent is and column 11 is R. So, I mean, there are a lot of ways to do this, but the dumbest way to do it would be to count. So literally just be B, C, D, I could just count, right? So 11 plus looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, I think. That plus six, do an exact match. And there's my 8.7. And that is correct. 8.701799. 8.701799. Okay, it seems to be working. I could then take this, and before I drag this thing all the way down, I gotta fix the location and the number of years. Now I get to dragging. I copy those down. I sum that. I copy those down. You can see it's working because it's just overriding what was there. Do a little formatting. That's a sum. Copy down. Sum. Now that broke there. Why did that break? Let's take a look at why that might have broken. Because when we go to the operating statement here, it's called general vacancy and credit loss. Whereas here, it's just called, looks like vacancy. Okay, well, got to clean that up. Vacancy. There we go. And then I, again, do a little draggy action. There we go. And again, a little draggy action. And it looks like, again, we got an issue here. Here it's called capital reserves. Let's see what it was called on the prior sheet. 
uh, called capital reserve. Here I'll just change that to fix that language there. Now that's clean. And then OPEX is there. And NOI is there. And life is good. Cool. And these are just all some divisions, some simple bits of math. Okay, so now the fun part is here the NOI is 5.6 million. I'm going to change this to 5. And now it's 4.7 million. We take the cap rate, we divide it. I'm going to ignore this part that says grow cap rate by 5 bips per year. I'm just going to leave that alone. That's my reversion. Okay, cool. That's my reversion value. There's no adjustment. That's the sales costs. The loan balance, now I got to make that vary too. So like if I'm using year 11, it should be pulling the loan balance at the end of year 10. Let's see if that's what it's doing. Perm debt ends in 504. Perm debt ends in 504. Yeah, okay, it's working. So what I got to do is, again, I got to do a lookup that says, look for this year, and then based on the year, give me the corresponding loan payoff. Now, this is all being done on an annual basis, so it's relatively easy. If it were monthly, it would get more irritating, because then we might have to have a window of time that's moving, because maybe you're selling it mid-year or something like that, but th this one's not that bad. Okay. So where was I? I'll go back here. Okay, so now I'm going to do an H lookup that says look for this year minus one. And it's going to look on the perm debt schedule. And then it's going to find. Uh, what's on the fourth row, and it's going to look for an exact match. I'll press close parentheses. Now, as you can see, and I'll make that negative. So now it looks for 36 million. If I make this year six, now it's pulling, you know, 41 million. Okay, so so far so good. Great. So the reversion calculation, this page is now working. That was the first part of this aggravation. Now that I made that flexible, we can move on to the second part, and that will be in our little next video. And by the way, if you're enjoying this sort of thing, be sure to check out my website, carrealestate.com. I've got a ton of materials where I take models, I tweak models, I fix them, do all kinds of good stuff. Um, you know, there's links in the description and stuff. Awesome.